Hey guys, what's up? It's Sean, Autotopia LA. This is one I've been waiting for for a really, really, really long time. This is my friend John. John has a company, side project, passion project called Maniac's Garage. You can definitely find him out there on Instagram. But this is one of those undertakings that it didn't come together in a minute. Here's all I know about it. I know you started with a 49 Ford, right up there with a 51 Ford, one of the ugliest cars ever produced in my opinion. I know all you Ford guys get pissed at me right now, but it's really not. A shoebox was never a beautiful car until you start sectioning and channeling and cutting and doing all the different elements. The achievement supreme in modern automotive styling. And I know underneath this thing, I don't even know the gen BMW, but I know there's BM, that's right, relax. BMW, yes. What BMW is under here? So it's a uh, 2008 335i. Okay. So that's an E92 for all you BMW buffs. There we go. I was yeah. just gonna say, I know E46, I know uh, like E39, I know a couple of the designations. Yeah, I, I caught one back there earlier. The E30, right? <laughs> yeah. I know that one. Otherwise, I know it's E something and I don't even know. So you take the body off the Ford, yeah. you take the body off the BMW, throw that away. Yeah. And you rebody it with the platform. Is it not a lot wider? It's actually not. It's surprising. Really? And people ask me how much measuring and preparation have I done prior to. Yeah. It was kind of like, you know, it's about the same size. That's about the uh, planning that went into the BMW Got it. coming together Got it. with the 49. Okay. okay. And at the end of the day, we're about an inch over on each side on the 49 coming down on the BMW rockers. So the BMW rockers are still inside the 49 rockers. And then the front and the back, we're about three inches and three inches. There's a little history on the body. So okay. the 49 came from Phoenix. Okay. So old timer started at 20 years prior to us starting this build. So I picked up the body for a thousand bucks. It was just gone. It was a goner. The only thing that was cool about it is that they started a chop on it 20 years prior. They did a four inch chop, but they wanted to do something unique. They didn't want to section the roof. Okay. So instead of chopping and sectioning the roof, you know, quartering uh -huh. it, they kept the roof intact and they shortened the car. So this 49 was shortened about seven inches before I got it. It wasn't finished. It was just all tacked together and it was flopping in the Got way. it. But that worked in our favor because that was within one inch of the BMW's wheelbase. Unbelievable. How lucky is that? That 20 is, years prior to us. Dude, Tell me there's not something divine about this. For sure. We'll I'm, get to the name of the car. I'm picturing like so much friggin' metal work. And this isn't what you do for a living, right? No. You, you do something different for a living. Yeah. Building cars is a passion thing for That's you. That's right. So I've been doing real estate for 18 years. I went about 15 years complete hiatus on cars. And I started yeah. to really itch about three years ago, a little longer than three years ago. And I was okay. like, I want to build something. I want to build something ratty. I, on the other end, like the shoebox sports. Yeah, that yeah, kinda yeah, cool. I'm sorry, dude. <laughs> so. John instantly hates me, man. And then, you know, you see him running around all over the place, chop, kind of let sled it out. You know, they just got some cool look to them. They're pretty cheap to get still, because there's, there's a lot of them, right? You know, budget was a big thing. Right. And so that's kind of how I went to the, the 49 Ford body. What prompted you to go with the 08 335? I wasn't even worried about how close it would fit because I was literally committed to cut the 49 up to whatever it needed to be. If we okay. needed to widen it, I was going to widen it. I didn't okay. want to, but if we, so I wasn't scared of it. I was like, we're just going to do this. I was considering a 350Z. I thought that was a good donor. Again, okay. budget was a big driving factor here. So I needed to be inexpensive. Originally, I wanted to build this under 5,000. I kind of missed that mark by a little bit. $26,000 yeah. worth of sides? An RX-8, they're again, cheap to get. They're rotary, they're kind of cool, a little controversial. I wanted to build True. a very controversial build. Well, okay? you've done that. You've definitely done that. So the BMW, I was pretty comfortable with them. They're very tunable. They're pretty affordable for a, a second hand. German engineering, even when you get into a base model German car, I'm sorry, they're just good, man. Their engineering's good. phenomenal, in my opinion. And by chance, my trainer crashed his BMW. Well. This is the E92 that's under this 49. So I bought her back from his insurance company for 2,500 bucks. I think it was like two more hundred bucks for him. Like, here you go, this is just for your troubles. Yeah. It was an automatic, unfortunately. I wanted a stick if I would have done it, you know, really from scratch. And maybe I would have gone with an X, which would have been an all wheel drive. Yeah, right. it was gonna be a fun car. Yeah, yeah. But it ended yeah. up being a two wheel drive and it is an automatic, but it's a Tiptronic. You got the, you know, the sport shift and now I have, you know, the transmissions tuned. So, so you have some fun it's like cool. with the stick and up and down it's shift cool. yourself. Before we even get in, because there's so much body stuff done on this car that's gonna take us a minute. Let's go through mechanical. Is it, is it fairly easy to pop the hood? Yep. 
Well, yes, it is. <clears throat> and I even painted the broomstick black, just for you. My favorite part, personally, and we talked about it off camera, right? I don't work on stuff. I, I'm not mechanical in the fucking slightest. You know, I was a working musician my whole life, so I'm a creative guy, right? I love creativity in any form or fashion. You know, the big dollar builds, there's the same amount of creativity. There's certainly the craft, but there's not the, you know, if you're doing it professionally, you're, bu you're building for someone else. So they want to build yet another 69 Camaro. Not giving 69 Camaros trouble, you guys, relax. You know what I mean, dude. Yeah. You want to do another do. 69 Camaro as a builder. That's how I feel about 57 do. Chevys, by yeah. the way. Not giving, you know. 100%. They're really, really nice ones. But 100%. <laughs> it's like there's a lot of the cars that yeah. have been done and done and done and done and whatever. I'm not knocking it. But I love the creativity that comes into something like this where you don't have any boxes that you live in. You don't have anybody that you're beholden to. No corporate sponsors. No da 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 da, -da All the different stuff. Yeah. So anyhow, yeah. that's my tirade. So is this still the engine from the 335? Yeah, so it the is. so the 335 is all here from the belt line down. So front to back, core support, all the dash. I still have AC, heater, cruise control. It's got anti-lock brakes, it has traction control, all still from the and BMW. And it's all from the 335. Yeah. So the shock tower's right here, You're, you see that's God, the BMW. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I am running yeah. coilovers on it now, so uh -huh. they're adjustable. Even have the, the stock brakes from the BMW because they're 13 and a half rotors, cross-drilled. They're really cool, man. So it was a really good candidate. Just because I don't know the BMWs yeah. that well. What's the engine? Six cylinder, right? What's the displacement on it? Yeah, so this is a three liter. Got it. Inline six. Uh huh. So this motor was, from what I understand, and somebody's going to correct me probably, but this was BMW's first production turbo car in that mid 2000s when they came out with it. So okay. it was a twin turbo car. So the motor is like the cousin of the 2JZ Toyota motor. So Got a, it. a Got bulletproof it. Yeah. motor from that standpoint. So really tunable platform. Easy to put boost to because it can to put deal boost with it. To. Yep. What we did, the very first thing as far as the motor's concerned, we wanted to ditch the factory turbos, two little bitty turbos. We went with this Garrett Motion. I noticed you got a, a fairly big turbo going down over here. It's a decent <laughs> size. I mean, I've seen way bigger. You know, this is a 62 millimeter. You have oil and water cooling to this. So that was a bear to fabricate and bring up this high. So there's actually an exhaust kit for this car. It's a manifold kit that is for a top mount turbo for the BMW, but it's normally under the hood of the BMW. Yeah. But I wanted the turbo to peek through the hood. You wanted to get that exposed. It, it had psycho to, you know. Look. Yeah, yes. yeah, dude. No so doubt. we had to extend yeah. it 10 inches to get it up through the hood. Oh. So that was a, that was a fun, fun time. So then this is all custom mm -hmm. fabbed here, right? One of the guys that worked with me on this for the entire project, this is his like 23, 24 year old son that did the TIG welding for us because we can't TIG, got no aluminum welding skills. Got it. And then we went with aftermarket intake. It's a Dock Race product. So that allows for additional injectors. So this car is direct injected factory. Mm -hmm. So we upgraded the factory injectors on it. And we also uh, went with Bosch upgraded. I think there's 650 injectors for the uh, tune port so, so, injection. So what kind of power does this thing make now? Well, I can tell you exactly because yeah. it was dynoed yeah. and yeah. it was 612 at the crank. So that's about, I think, 528-ish at yeah. the wheel, something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. And I think the torque was right under 500. It was like 489. Just such a bitch in power range, though. It's like super drivable. Smooth. Still has traction control, but it's still, you'll smell the rubber even with the traction control I'll bet, on. man. Yeah, yeah. Speaking of rubber, it's not the same wheel and tire configuration that came on the 335 now, is it? <laughs> nope, no, this is not. And actually, that's what really pushed this car over the top is the wheels. And the going tires. as wide as you did and as well i owe it to my friend robert yeah we were at sema yeah. a few years back connected with an old friend over at hostile wheels okay showed him the rendering i had for this idea mm -hmm. he said hey what kind of wheels are you gonna run on that so the rest is history we have custom Ditching. made they actually designed these wheels for us so a full one-off for this build one-off for this build Ditching. but now they offer it as a cast version so these are truck wheels for the big lifted trucks with the yes. low profile kind yes. of the big. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they sell it now on the market and it's called the Hostel Maniac. I love that, cool? that. That's bitching, man. That's super cool, dude. 20 by 12 on the front. Jeez. 20 by 14 on the rear. Oh so the tire size is a 345. What what car does that come on factory? It's, it's, this is Z06? a quiz. No, Ferrari LaFerrari. Got it. Yeah, yeah. That's why I didn't know it because I, I I'm pretty American. <laughs> they're Toyo Proxes. Mm. 
I mean, the look alone is rad, but it's got to really help to plant the car, I would imagine. It sticks. And, uh, you know, that was, again, going back to the original design. It needed to be kind of ratty, kind of, you know, controversial. It yeah. had to be chopped. Yeah. It needed to be widened. We could have tubbed it and, or mini tubbed it and, you know, get the wheels in. And I know that's a cool look. I really wanted the car to be ridiculous. There's no rules in rat rodding. I don't, I wouldn't call this a rat rod. This is something different. Like you can build something wild and there's no rules, right? Because I'm crossing you know, the divide. It's an American body, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. then it's got German engineering, power, performance, all of this, right? Yeah, dude. And then the Aero, that's kind of JDM inspired. Very that's much That's kind of so. drift car, time attack car kind of look. Check this one out, you guys. First time making your own flares. Yeah. Leaving it tack welded, like we were talking about off camera, right, is the tack weld leads to the feel of the riveted flares, kicking it back over to JDM. It's like you've really, bitching how many lines you've crossed on yeah. this car. I mean, because it, it should be, don't take this wrong, dude, but it should be ugly, and yet it's not. And like you said, it's very cartoon-esque, you know? It's so outlandish. You know, wherever we take it, young, old, men, women, love it. There's always that 1%, they're like, why'd you put these wheels on? Of course. Why'd you ruin a 49 Ford? This thing was going to the junk, this was a heap, you know, to begin with. No one's asking me why I ruined a BMW, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> but whatever. This is the third set of fenders that I put on here, and it really, the tacking it, that was by necessity originally, because I knew they weren't gonna be permanent. But I had to get the car to SEMA, and yeah. so I just grabbed some eBay fenders because we were running out of time on the whole build. Okay. You know, they were shorties, the wheels were sticking out. I hated them at first, you know? Yeah. And we just tacked it on and then it kind of stuck. And people yeah. were like, I kind of like that. And it kind of looks like a bolted on, you know, fender, but it, it does. doesn't. Thank These you. are the final fenders, I think. Sure. And this is the most that I stretch myself as far as the ability to roll a fender use a, a bead roller, shrink no, I, it, I, I, hammer dolly it. I get it, I'm really knocked out, I gotta tell you, man. I mean, things like this, like you put the BMW insignia right into yeah. the where Ford would have been, right? Like this is yeah. that bullet Yeah, it Ford. said V8 right there. And, uh, yeah. and again, that was like maybe four or five days before SEMA and the grill was all powder coated and this is actually <laughs> wet cleared, so it's black powder coat and then it's clear coated and rubbed out. Yeah, the powder coated number five. Uh, specialty coatings, they did a really good job on that. Yeah. So I was a little hesitant cutting into it, but I'm like, we gotta put it on because at first year at SEMA, I didn't have the hood open. We didn't have some stuff finished here. And yeah, I wanted yeah. them to figure out that there's something more than just a chopped, widened 49 Ford I dig shoe it. box. Yep. And so that was kind of like the, hey, they're gonna ask questions, let's put that on and they light up, it's kind of cool, you know? So the trunk has it too and. So <laughs> the aero stuff on here, as far as the splitter goes, mm -hmm. your rockers, is this handmade stuff? Is this? Yeah. It is. Yeah, yeah so we yeah, started, yeah. you know, again, just yeah. in my head, transferred it to a piece of cardboard, and then I brought some guys yeah. in. Uh, there's a local shop out where I'm at, and uh, Gorilla Splitters, they build these cool splitters for, you know, production. Yeah. And I, I challenged them on this 3 8 aluminum, because theirs is like four times thinner. So they hand jigsawed this body kit out, out of 3 8 aluminum. Bitchin', man. Same on the rocker, right? You Same designed on the rocker, that, laid the it out rear with... diffuser, the rear spoiler wing on the trunk. It was gonna have a drift wing originally. I was gonna come do like a, a bumper mount style drift wing and it was not, yep. not real high. So that yep. was the original design and I yep. still think that would have looked better, but I, we'd have ran out of time, ran out of I budget. I got you. And now it's just kind of stuck. People like it. It's more of a NASCAR-ish looking dig it. You know, rear wing. I mean, I gotta say, dude, bitchin' design work, man. And we wanted the contrast, you know? We wanted it to be like raw and attainable, right? Because again, it's, you know, started out with five guys and one 16 year old girl working on this, Saturdays only. Kind of dwindled down to three guys. It still stayed Saturdays only, pretty much, because we all have lives, kids, life, families, things. Sure, man. Work, right? Yeah, dude, bro. And so this was just very limited time. We're working in a metal shop, 106 degrees in the summer, 30 degrees in the winter, Southern Arizona. But we had to push for the goal. Made yeah. it twice to SEMA, you know, second yeah. time we took it. So first time went hostile wheels, second time it went with Optima, and we actually ran it in the uh, street Challenge? Oh, you did? Yeah, we had a great time. When did you do that? Was that? That was last year. It was? Yeah. Curious metal questions for you is like, I see all this stuff here on the rear trunk. I see this stuff here at the back of the roof line. You know, there's, is this like you filling things in and leaving it so-called unfinished rather than like, you know, cleaning it all up and making it look like it's one piece of metal? Yeah, so some of this is rusted panels that were replaced. This was the old fuel filler sure. for the 49, needed sure. to go, the BMW is on the right side. Yep. 
And so the guys that did the initial chop on it, you know, they kind of decided where this was gonna go. It wasn't real clean. We just decided, you know what, we're gonna add a few more welds. And you just patchworked it, basically. We just added some, some fake welds, really. I shaved the license box on the trunk. It had like a, this half moon, it kind of looked like a smile. And I'm like, I don't really like that smile. So then I just kind of added a few more things. And I'm like, you know what, I'm just gonna tie it into that C-pillar. And then we had to do some rust work on the hood. So yeah. I just did the same thing on the hood. So it's kind of Art Deco. It is what it is. I'm so, like, I know you came out this weekend. It's not specifically for us. I know you came for us as well as the crews. You, you know what I mean? It's, like you're coming in from Arizona, so you're gonna line up some things, but. Don't tell Ken, but it's more for you. Ken, he's totally BSing. But honestly, dude, thank you, because I've been really so looking forward to learning about this, because I love the creative approach to this car. And as completely whacked out as it is, and like you said, controversial, it's very well thought out, it's very creative, and in my opinion, you brought it together, dude. You flat out brought it thank together. You. It's bitching. I mean, it's I really I wanted bitching. to be able to drive it. You know, right. I wanted it to be drivable. Like you said, it's got cruise control, it's got, it's got ABS. Control. Traction? Traction. Traction. So I'm assuming, the license plate is because you gave life to the car again. It was a dead car that you brought back. It's got dual meaning for us, right? Okay. We gave this old 49 Ford new life, right? New BMW, new beginning. Got it. So the license plate is born again. Got it. What's under the trunk? Is there any fuel cell or is it like, what do we got going? The trunk is actually still not finished. I was gonna do uh -huh. a fully upholstered trunk, but now I'm wondering if I should because it's cool to see the BMW inside because other than under the hood, you can obviously get a good feel. Well, but dude, under the let's, trunk, let's, you really get to see. Let's, let's pop it then. It's raw. So check it out. So this is the BMW. It's chassis. Yeah. Stock fuel tank. Still yeah. has all the electronics. <laughs> Uh -huh. Got a nice Optima battery over here. Uh -huh. And then this is where the BMW ends. This is a custom piece that we made. Uh -huh. Comes out and this is where the 49 the Ford. Ford. Wow, so dude. 18 gauge sheet metal. It's actually electro galvanized. So whatever you can get into it, it won't rust behind it. You get to see the, the roll cage so as it finishes off. you're fully caged through the car. I'm fully caged from front to back. So front shock towers to the rear. And that was necessary, right? Because mm -hmm. we went from a framed 49 Ford frame underbody right. to a unibody BMW. Right. And I just didn't trust the 49's, you know, structural, right. it wasn't gonna be sufficient, ah, so. Dude, really smart, man. We started with uh, an actually off the shelf hoop for a BMW 335i from Auto Power. That would have been like a, basically a bolt-in cage. SCCA car or something like that, right? Mm -hmm. So it was just a hoop. And ironically, the height of the cage on the factory BMW roof actually matched up with our chopped 49 roof. Isn't that cool? So then we built from there, to the front, to the back. That was uh, my buddy Ryan. Part of what I marvel at, I suppose, is the idea that you lucked out on a lot of stuff. I mean, we honestly even, did. Even look, at, look at the, uh, the clearances. This is the BMW's inner wall. Yeah. This is the 49 Ford. Yeah. This yeah. is the BMW's package tray. 49 Ford right on top. I mean, just wild. It, it, it was meant to be. I mean, I really, I, I really believe it. All right, let's check out. I'm so curious to see what's happening up in here. Oh man, this is bitching, dude. God dang. <laughs> So status racing seats, did, did they come in Alcantara like this? So it's really cool. You can actually order them however you want online. You Got can it. do camo, you can do pink, you can do whatever. <laughs> I, I chose to go with the red with the black contrast stitch because I knew I wanted great. the interior to be black with the red contrast. With the subtleties stitch. of the red around it. Wow, really cool though, like the BMW yep. pedals and stuff. So still has the factory column from the BMW. We're still running that the BMW gauges. You just added gauges. the quick release onto it. I did, and yeah, we grafted the gauges in, so we still have full functionality. So those are 335 That's gauges correct. right there. God dang, dude. And then wow. check this out. So the center console, the lower part, that's factory BMW right there. But it's extended and it meets up to a custom built center part that meets up to the 49 dash. And so we're using some of the BMW bits and pieces. We got the AC controls, AC and heater here. Yeah. We yeah. still have the hazard and other stuff yeah, here. Yeah, you do, yeah. And then we went yeah. with Audi TT <laughs> vents because I just yeah. like the round vents. I thought it goes better with yeah. the car than the BMW's yeah, rectangle yeah, no, ones. I see it. You had no. people wrapping your panels and stuff, didn't you? We, we wrapped some of the flat stuff. So we built the rear seat delete out of aluminum. That's wrapped in Jeez, Landau foam, bro. quarter inch Landau foam, and then it's black suede. We had an upholstery shop help us out. Yeah, I mean, you can kind of tell, dude, the fitment's really bitching on this, you know? It's like as ratty as the car is, all of a sudden it gets slightly nicer in here with some of the kind of more opulent materials going on. And I wanted the creature comforts, you know, and I wanted that contrast of you. raw versus yes. function. 
so you said it's auto. Can right. we can we power it? We don't have to mm -hmm. start it, but is it just ignition on if I touch this? Yeah, no brake, ignition on. Now push the brake in, and then pull the little lever, and then you can shift it auto forward back, and then bring it all the way back. Me. Go to the left. And that's sport mode. So now you can basically sequential shift. I get up, it. Down. You know what that shifter is? So that's a BMX. This is looking like something off of. A I was just gonna say this looks like a bicycle. It is. You gotta be kidding me, dude, seriously? Yeah, it's actually a mountain bike handlebar cut in half with BMX grips and uh, BMX brakes. <laughs> you gotta be And they were red anodized already, so it kind of worked with the look. So we transferred oh it to the e-brake as well. Yeah, I know I've said it a bunch of times, and you guys, I apologize when I get repetitive, but uh, the creativity and the ingenuity that went into this car is spectacular. Uh, I'm just truly knocked out. So we wanted to finish it off with these Axia alloys. These are actually made for UTVs. It's a whole line of accessories, mounts. So now so you got a visor to block the sun, but it's see-through because yeah. you're too short here. If you dropped yeah. a visor, you wouldn't see where the hell you're going. Yeah, so the mirror, <laughs> the fire extinguisher mount, phone mount. Again. All Axia, which is off-road stuff. Mm -hmm. So this is even BMW, isn't it? Yeah, light switch, all <laughs> BMW, because I didn't want to mess with if I could salvage it, then I want to use it. Dude. So we moved the starter button down to the middle because I thought it looked cooler there for videos like this. I'm with you. I like that. I, <laughs> no, no, but I'm with you, dude. I really like that here rather than being buried somewhere mm -hmm. up here that we're not going to see it at all. I mean, so, dude. So here's the, uh, the rocker, right? So this is the 49 rocker right here. This is just a piece of off-the-shelf aluminum, one, uh -huh. one inch by two and a half inch. Simply covering the BMW rocker. So there is a steel piece under it that we bent and welded, and that's the structural piece. But then I needed something to finish the BMW's factory carpet into. So we put this little L-shape aluminum on to finish the So that's BMW the carpet. factory carpet in here BMW as well. factory carpet, <laughs> floor mats. I'd imagine there's gonna be more to talk about, but we'll talk more as we go for a drive. You know, I wanna, I, I wanna, go, I wanna yeah. go for a ride with you in this okay. thing big time, man. Cool. Alright you guys, here we go for a ride in uh, the Maniac Garage Mortigan. So you guys, there was some stuff that we didn't talk about during the interview. Um, you know, there's so many elements that make this car what it is. So one of which is what you've done up front. The grill, where you added metal to, to, to make up for the lack of bumper. Yeah, so the 49 Ford and probably the rest of the shoebox 5051, they have this massive bumper down below, right almost below the grill. And of course we didn't want that bumper. So now I had the big gap of nothing. And so we created this thing, it's a front roll band, kind of comes from the mini trucking, you know, and yeah. probably hot rodding before my time. But hand rolled this piece of 18 gauge sheet metal, you know, for it. And then we mounted the splitter to it. And so, yeah, it kind of gives it a really cool finished, you know, front end, it's very mean looking. It really does. And the other thing you did that you were talking about was behind the BMW emblem, behind the, the grill itself that would have been 49, a, a mesh type of material to kind of cover up, right? The, yeah. the exposing too much of the BMW. Yeah, yeah. So we used the perforated mesh uh, on the front there to, on the 49, it's just wide open. So it shows all the core support on the BMW. So I used the perforated mesh or perforated sheet metal and uh, had that powder coated to match the centers on the wheels. So it's kind of a bronze metallic. Yeah. I mean, it looks really good. Hey, you can't believe that you're driving my car, but I can't believe that I'm riding with you in my very, car. Have you ever been a passenger? I've been a passenger one time, and it was my tuner that drove it. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, this is sweet. I get to drive a lot of stuff, dude. You know, we were talking about it off camera, how many different vehicles I get the opportunity to drive. I mean, you probably don't even understand how much I've been looking forward to this, but your creativity that I've mentioned over and over again, and you seem to be one of those guys that has a, I'm gonna figure it out approach, so that we've gone from the process of, I've seen it, I've seen it not running at all. I'm driving your car down the road right now. This yeah. is like, and it, and it feels so far, it just feels, I mean, obviously I haven't gotten into it in the slightest, but it just feels so completely dry. So, okay, so back to some of the other stuff car related here that didn't hit the interview. We had to deal with some stuff for your front window, 
windows as well as for your side windows here. Yeah, we got the car with no windows, no molding, no nothing. So I never really touched a 49 and you know as far as bits and pieces inside. So I wasn't sure what I was missing to be honest with you. Right. And so as we were, you know, putting it together, I realized really the, the task that I gotten myself into. Yeah, so man. With the windows alone, um, I was able to source some uh, stock window rubber for the front and the back window. We did cut it down to fit the chop. Side windows, I went with universal rubber and uh, Lexan. I knew it was gonna be fixed. Got the little sliders on it, race sliders. So right, you like you smoke. said, so you can reach out and get reach. yourself a cup of coffee. Yeah, a tall fits through there, not, not nothing bigger. Yeah, you're and, not getting a venti through here, man. <laughs> no, no, not working. For the windshield, we do have a DOT, laminated glass. And then for the side, it's Lexan. Back window is Lexan. Works really well. And the other thing, you guys, there's a good, as, as you guys have already figured out, if you're still with us at this point, although the interview was pretty long, there's still things that were completely left out, like the things we just mentioned that I feel are pretty damn important. The other one that I absolutely love, dude, one of the hardest things, in my opinion, is when you go custom, what do we do for side view mirrors? What do we do for door handles? You know, in my mind, I wanted to keep uh, some of the components from the shoe box. I really like the little mirrors, so those are stock mirrors from the shoe box. The door handles are unique on the 49 that they, only one year they, they had the pool handles, so I really wanted to keep those. That's the only year coated. of that door it's handle. Only, yep. So I wanted to wow. keep that, and it was kind of a challenge because they're known for being uh, troublesome and trying to adjust them. They work really well, so I just wanted to keep the stock handles.
drive your car, I'm going to show you the same respect back, which is to drive your car in that manner. I think I've been smiling the whole time I'm driving this car. It's just really fun. It's not very loud until oh, you're romping, you know? Yeah, but it comes on good. It makes those sounds that come from a turbo car. Uh, when you hear it whistling and then you hear the off. And at night when you see the flames. Does it blow flames too? Reflex by Motor Motorsport is what we use for tuning and uh, we can do multiple tunes. So it's set up on 91 octane right now. It can do more flames, less flames, more snap, crackle and pop or just super mellow. Is it set up in a flex fuel manner where you can run E85? So I don't have it ready yet, but uh, it, it can be. So that will ah. be a next phase. So power. I'm, I'm so used to, obviously, you know, American muscle. A lot uh, of torque. That's the thing. Big, 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 yeah. big torque, typically. So this thing, obviously, it doesn't have that crazy torque. But it fucking is awesome. It's Seven so grand. <laughs> it's so bitchin'. sounds are good on this car, dude. guy that at one time cars not yep. for a long time <laughs> let's take on this crazy 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 build and here you are getting to enjoy the hell out of it man it's just so neat Impressive, John. It's not. It's not crazy fast. It's just fast enough, you know. Yeah, but it's you fun. know, when I think of what you're built on, granted, considerably more power than a stock 335. This type of setup is more of a. If you were going to be road coursing, it's more of a momentum car, right? It's you're not down low torque. You're you keep this thing rolling and stay in the RPMs, and that's where you're going to get the love, right? Yeah. But just flat out, well done, man. I just want to take this moment to thank you for, you know, having us on your channel and uh, yeah, it's really an honor. So, I just love it, man. You're very you guys welcome. Put out really John. good content. You're 
very welcome, man. Thank you. You know, we have an aspiring YouTube channel. You do? I didn't know that. Yeah. I'm leaving this camera on right now. Yeah, it's Maniacs Garage okay. on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook. And, uh, you know, one of the things that we do, we try to, you know, inspire, you know, people, any generation, any age, you know, yeah, really man. just to get out in their garage, go wrenching on something. Yeah. You know, it doesn't have to be fancy. It doesn't have to be crazy. And yeah. uh, speaking of wrenching, one of my really good sponsors is Boxo. Oh, Boxo definitely made this project, you know, come together. So, Robert at Boxo, thanks, bro. I, I, yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's great. Well, that one was a long time coming and well worth the wait, man. I've watched this car from not running to now personally getting to drive it down the road, which was a great surprise to me, and then getting to rip in it a bit with John just cool man talk about a creative creative approach to a custom car build absolutely absolutely just love this one so a big thanks to john number one for taking the time to do this with us go check out maniac's garage when you get a second and a big thanks to you guys for hanging and watching what we do because i genuinely do appreciate it and i'll see you in the next episode all right man later